Hey everybody. All right. So, what do you think about my sweater? I really like it. I went thrift store shopping. Found me a $3 sweater that I really like. What do you think, Bridget? It's fabulous. I love it. I love to get my sweaters at the Salvation Army. I bet somebody paid serious bucks for this. Let's see the tag. Let's see the tag. We'll, not, we'll, we'll find out. Oh, really? Yeah, we could ask them. The public will know. The public will know. We don't know anything about names of Okay, so it's Cold Water Creek. Well, that sounds very interesting. Yeah. Do we have a customer? Yes. All somebody right. will know. Somebody. So let us know. Let us know. It's three dollars a good buy. It, it looks like it might be, you know, like an eighties model. See, uh -huh. see those. She's an older daughter. So, anyway, I like it. So anyway, so I am going to cut my soap today that I made yesterday, and we did two videos on it. This is bar number six, and we see the jump in this wall. Oh. And uh, See, this right here is uh, bar number 16. I think I have somebody I need to deal with. You see, I was distracted by a gentleman who came, and it's a city worker, and there's a breezeway right beside me that used to be like a barber shop, and they hauled it out, and they fixed it up for a breezeway so people could park in the back and walk to the front of downtown. I'm very lucky to have that right beside my store. But because this wall was an interior wall, not an exterior wall, they never ever did anything to stop water and airflow underneath the wall. And so um, when they get out there working with water, water will pool into my store. And he was letting me know that, that they're going to be grinding the floor. So we may have some extra noise uh, cleaning. They're, they're, they're grinding the cement floor to make it level and then they're gonna paint or something uh, back there. And so we may have some extra noise during this video. Um, and um, so I had to deal with that, but that's all done. So this is bar number six, which I call the grasshopper. Let it hop into your dry chapped skin and uh, I think there's a little bit more to that. The logo's on the website. And this is our lotion bar. So, uh, the lotion bar being white, I'm going to do it first. Uh, it's so tall, when you add the extra chunks, it brings the soap up much higher into the mold. And with doing that, it's, uh, you've got to be more cautious um, getting it out. And you can't stack it one on top of each other. So when you're doing your recipes, make sure that your base recipe doesn't come all the way to the top because then you won't be able to stack your um, soaps on top of each other in the little baskets, which is so space conscious for your countertops. And so I'll try to get that out, just let it fall out gently so I don't mess up my top. And We'll get these little peelies off. Did you get those dishes done over there? Almost. I got distracted by the city work. Yep. <laughs> Bridget's going to join us as soon as she gets those dishes done because we're fixing to make tarts and we're going to do a tart video. <laughs> did my towel. I did not get your towel. And, uh, Accusing me of such things. <laughs> Towel stealing of all the impertinence. <laughs> all right. harder to cut I think is because it has these very cured chunks in them that are weeks old <coughs> and 
So therefore, it's, it's not cutting through what it's sort of set to cut through, which is fresh soap. It's cutting through um, old soap. Uh, no, not all of the bar, of course, is old. But anyway, let me show you uh, one of these. Isn't that adorable? And you get, you know, you can put any color chunks in and you can make soap just to be the chunks and scent it with a different scent than you do the other, the rest of the soap, which I think is extremely fun. Uh, and you get a host of different, you know, arrays. Uh, like this only has one green one and lots of orange and black soap. And that one has one green one and, well, has a green one on that side too. Uh, the bars are very big. Hey, Bridget, mm. you want to smell it and tell people what you think it smells like? Okay. You made soapy messes. I made soapy messes and you're having to clean it up. Yes, it doesn't want to clean it up. I, I do pay you for that though. Yeah, I can't touch it. Hmm. Look at that one, it's too much There's too much green. <laughs> what, was you smelling the smell sinus soap? Yeah, I was smelling the sinus soap. <laughs> it's... I don't know. I don't know how to just describe it. It smells good, though. Yeah, it's like fresh, clean, clean yeah. with a touch of... Sinus soap. Of licorice. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's, a, it's a signature scent. Mm -hmm. I guess you better go call back whoever that was that called that we didn't answer the phone because we were sniffing doing a smell soap. test. We were sniffing, sniffing soap. And like this one, no colorful chunks on this side but one and only three on this side. So you never know what you're going to get. I, I was thinking about this when I was at home. And hot processed soap doesn't lend a lot of patience because, you know, it gets stiff pretty easy. And it's not like cold processed, so you can't put the chunks in and then pour the other soap on top. You know, you have to... But I thought to myself, you could save some chunks and you know mix them all in but the ones you saved you know like pick out some particularly colorful ones and when you're doing the swirl work on trying to keep the chunks down instead of getting the chunks up to the top and then pushing the chunks that you've saved that might be particularly pretty you know your picks uh, down into it here and there. Uh, I don't know for sure how that would look uh, because I've not tried it, but it sounds like a fun idea. And um, and you might even make those chunks smaller, you know. And in the past, I have cut my soap up and used smaller chunks. <clears throat> um, in it, but sometimes I'd have problems with melting. The little chunks would, would be easier melted. Ooh, isn't that one pretty? And see, that's a little chunk there, but because you're only seeing a fraction of it, but it's really a big chunk. Ooh, these are so pretty. Let me bring you. Isn't that pretty? And, and you know, and, and so once you cut it, the what it looks like on the top with there just being an inch of it is not that big an issue. But if it's something you would like to do, you know, is have the chunks, have more control over your chunks, you might say, then that's what you might could do. And there is a video right now that I've just posted. Uh, I think I actually, I, I did them and recorded them yesterday, but I did, <clears throat> I posted them this morning. 
um, showing how I make this soap. And I think it says how to make a lotion, how to make soap, how to make a lotion bar soap with embeds. I think it's something like that. And I've made this soap before on YouTube, so you might get more than one. I think on the others, I think it might have just said how to add embeds. There we go. And yeah, with this last one, just two chunks here, no chunks at all here. Don't know if there's any on the inside. So on this one here, I'll probably put it in our discount bin or maybe take it home for personal use. All right. Let me wipe a little bit of the white off because we're fixing to cut a very golden pretty bar. There we go. And so now this is our bar number six, which is called the Grasshopper. And I can't tell you why I named it that point, that or I'd have to kill you afterwards. So it's just good you don't know. <laughs> uh, but it's, um, it, the name has a, a comedic uh, background. And every time I make the soap, I think of it and I think how hilarious it was. Um, and so that is a little pun for you to think about. Hey, Bridget. Yeah. Are you going to come be part of the video? Yeah. What that custom can intrigue me with a video, but I had to watch. I had to watch. You gotta get to stay off the Facebook, girl. Oh, no. Did you see what she posted this morning? She <laughs> posted a Nortelli fudge. No, it was a brownie. It was a brownie. Okay, a Nortelli, Nortelli brownie. brownie. It was like a homemade brownie made with Nutella. Yeah, and basically all it was was Nortelli and two tablespoons of butter, and you blend that up, and then you put. So, I think it's like a half a cup of sugar or a fourth a cup of sugar and yeah. three eggs. And some flour. And no no and you beat you beat the eggs yeah. and the sugar and then you add the chocolate. The chocolate, chocolate and then you add the little bit just a little bit of flour. It's like a th three fourths of a cup. Yeah. And then you blend all that together and then you put it in a casserole pan and then you take scoops of Nortelli and put them in rows on it. So basically, you're just eating Nortelli cooked with Nortelli in it. And it it, well, I got fat watching the video. It was so, so good. I'm making it. I'm so making it. I'm so making it. I'm gonna bring it here and torture you with it. I love Nortelli. Anyway, you know what the video was that intrigued me this time? I don't know. Did you share? No, I didn't share it. I was still watching it and I paused it. It's okay though. No. But the, apparently the fashion industry in France has decided to change the norms. Uh-huh. And they're they're putting on fashion shows with more healthy sized women. I'm not gonna say the F word because I don't like that word, but healthy sized women. Uh -huh. what normally, did they call them? Normally proportioned women? Um I don't remember I don't remember, I don't remember what it said. I didn't actually read like read that. You don't remember what they called the women. No, I was just watching it. Well, nothing to disrespect Obama and his wife, but Texas, um, uh, Obama and them put out some guidelines for school oh. lunchrooms. Oh my gosh. And they took the fryers away, the pizza, uh, pizza away, I think. That's heresy. That's heresy. <laughs> And they found that the children would not eat the lunches that was provided under the guidelines of Miss Obama's, which I believe it was all her program. It was her program. Okay, I, I don't know how presidential wives end up doing certain things and what under what authority, and I have no problem with it, but I don't know how that went. Uh, but anyway, uh, and so... I don't know, 
if they voted, they put it on some kind of bill, or they just, they did some. Kids started taking pictures of their lunches and sending them on Facebook. Ah, uh, kids started taking pictures of the lunches and posting them on Facebook. And like, they, they posted a picture of what it was supposed to look like, and what it ended up looking like. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. I well, the Friars are back in Texas, <laughs> and uh, they now uh, are serving uh, more child children-friendly food. I don't know if the kids will get healthier or not be healthier, but Texas cited that the reason that they wanted to do it was they could not afford the waste anymore. The children were not eating the food. And so the food was being thrown away, and they could not afford the waste anymore. So they decided that they had to quit, and I don't know how they got it approved, but they basically rebelled against the system and said, we're not serving this to our children anymore. Bridget, we've got a couple of small bars at bar number six. Uh, they're the first ones here next to the lotion bar. Uh -huh. And they're going to need to go into the discount bin when they're packaged. Okay. Um, I'm not exactly sure how it happened because the other three look perfectly normal sized. But, and, and there's a few bars that look perfectly normally sized in this loaf. But there's a couple that's really short. And, Did you um, cut them funny? Huh? Did you cut them funny? No. I, I, somehow they ended up with not as much soap in the mold. Oh. Um, I'm not exactly sure how that happened. I've been seriously considering uh, increasing my batch size of my soaps because I have a few of them that from time to time just turn out too small in my opinion. Let's weigh this one. And, uh, Oh, the battery's low on this one. Okay. Okay, dishes are done. Woohoo! Did you put the screw back in here? Mm -hmm. The screw seems to be a, been reapplied, and so I can't open it up easy. No, I didn't. I don't know. Let's see if this one's got any battery. It should. I used that one. Last time. See, five ounces. That's my standard one. And this little one came out, and it just looks really little. And it's 4.6. So it's four tenths of an ounce smaller. But you see the difference? Yeah. It really looks small, even though it's just that fraction difference. So I've been thinking about increasing my batch size. Uh, a little bit because normally that's they come out at five ounces and I usually put them at 4.8 on the website 4.8 on the website because as they cure they'll lose moisture and become slightly smaller so these are 6.5 because they have the the addition of other bars of soap uh, do you want to hold one of these over there for them to look at sure I've got some white specks. Just a few white specks. Isn't it pretty? I was distracted during the um, process mm, of the cook time by customers. Uh, oh, show them that one. It was pretty. Oh. The gold and the oats sort of swirly around in there just looks so pretty to me. Yeah. And it's that's just a natural color. And oh God, it smells good. Don't it smell good, Bridget? Uh huh. Yeah, I was just going sniffing. Well, what would you? What do you smell? Mm. It just smells kind of florally. Uh huh. And very, very pleasant. It's very pleasant. It's not overpowering florally, but it's it's very nice. I'm not one for floral. I don't really like the smell. I'm more citrus. Uh huh. And um, it smells good. Uh, do you smell the? You smell the lemon, then the lemon. Yeah, grass. just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's not overpowering. Mm, mm It's just lightly there. 
Just slightly yeah, there. Just slightly there. Do you think it could use some more? No, I think it's perfect. I think it's perfect. Okay. I think it's perfect. All right. Well, as long as it stays this way. Uh, do you smell the ginger grass? Mm. Look, I don't think so. Unless the ginger grass. I don't remember what ginger grass smells. I can smell it. But the ginger grass is a very weak smell in soap. But it really. No, I don't smell it. Okay, it really adds something when you are using it uh, with lemongrass. Yeah. Ginger grass and lemongrass really is wonderful. And ginger grass is a natural moisturizer. Mm -hmm. So it's, and I put a lot of ginger grass in this soap. So that's one of the reasons that this soap is so awesome for dry, chapped, cracked, and irritated skin. Yeah. It's not only the addition of the half ounce of cocoa butter to the super fats, um, it's also the, uh, the essential oil. That I know it smells good. Huh? I know it smells good. So that's all that counts, right? Yes. I've never actually got a bar of it before. I may have to swap one. When you're when you're labeling your soap and you've got to give it a weight, when you call the FDA, they will tell you that you need to, that they understand that some products lose moisture while packaged on the shelf. And they understand that the measurement that you give it may be slightly altered from what it will actually be when it's purchased, depending on how long it sits on the shelf. So what they ask you to do is hit a happy medium. Uh, so these are usually five ounces when I cut them and I advertise them is 4.8 uh, and even then if a bar sits for a really long time which this bar doesn't it's very popular we're sold out at the moment yeah lady come in and bought every bar we had which and was what 10 yeah 10 yeah, we bars had 10. we had 10 bars left uh, at winter time they hit us pretty rough for pretty hard for this bar and um, uh, she just had her arms full. And uh, when she did, um, it sold me out, and I already had it on the cook list. Um, but, so I don't, this one don't sit that long. But a few bars do, like bar 18. The yeah. unisex soap. Yeah. Uh, it, grandma's, grandma's. Yeah. Grandma's yeah. Since yeah. Ever since then, that, uh, it's bad to talk about these things, but they attacked me on Amazon and caused Amazon to take my account away uh, by posting rude comments on my soaps to prevent people from buying them uh, for fun, jealousy, evil intentions, to harm me, to do, do, me, do me wrong. Uh, and so uh, Amazon has begged me to reopen my account. Uh, I, I receive an email from them like every other week begging me to reopen my account. But I see no use in it. They allowed people to make comments about my soap, leave feedback and review information. In other words, their review of my soap that had never purchased my soap. I, I think you should have to purchase a soap before you should be able to review it. Yep. But they said, when I complained that there was these people leaving these horrible things, calling me names, calling my soap names, uh, saying all these things as comments on my soap, they were other soapers just being foul. Um, and they reaped their own reward for that. Um, and I'm not in charge of that. Um, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't seek revenge in any way. Uh, and if I met any of them today, I would give them a hug. Um, but they left these reviews to stop other people from purchasing my soap. But because I had bad reviews, 
feedback, uh, bad reviews on my products, Amazon canceled my account. Uh, I, they said I was in violation and that I would have to write in a letter explaining uh, why I had all these bad feedbacks. And I called them and I'm like, I have these bad feedbacks because you're allowing other soapers to post on my posts who sell my, the you know pro soap also and are just doing this for evil intentions and have never bought my soap. And they're like, anybody can just write anything they want to about anybody and anybody's soap on our website and any other product. So if you see a product on Amazon, you can go and call it the worst product in the world. You can tell them that it sucks and it's just terrible and please don't buy it. And there's nothing they can do about it. And they, they want it that way. And they begged me to, to open my account back up. <laughs> They don't do good business. They don't protect their sellers. I'm not doing business with them. So I was selling tons of the grandma's lard soap on there. It was just something people seemed to like on Amazon. So we made up a lot of it because I was selling it by the buckets on there. Yeah. Um, but uh, off my regular website, I don't sell it that much. Yeah. Because they see all the other soaps. And so, they don't want those. Yeah, because they're, they're better. They are better than Grandma's Old Fashioned Lard Soap. So yeah. it's just the occasional shopper that will pick up the Lard Soap now. Because Mama used to make it. Yeah, but people go yeah. on, they think, oh, I want, I want some real lard, I want some real li old fashioned lye soap. I, I've got a problem, I need some lye soap. And so they search for lye soap. Uh, you know, and they end up with grandmas, and they don't realize all of y'all is wonderful if you're selling on Amazon. All those other wonderful bars out there are better than just plain lard soap. Uh, maybe not every one of them is better, but most of them I think are better because lard soap doesn't have any bubble. It, it just has moisturizing and cleansing factors. Uh, lard makes a nice hard bar, so it's long lasting, but it's great on my hair. Oh, you like it on your hair? Yes, it's not it's too greasy. You know, I have the grease problem. Oh, I didn't you know that. Well, well, so it out. has lots of advantages, yeah. but overall, For a soap English. that bubbles and it's creamy and moisturizing mm -hmm. and hard and has all of the wonderful things that you could get in a bar is better than a bar that just has a couple of factors. Yeah. But I don't know. All right, would you set that over there? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, we're going to leave those. On top. Oh yes, yes. Because those are net. Well, let's put this one. Okay. We got to be careful that this is not going to sit down on top of that one. That's why I was. Mm, yeah. That's why I was going to put this one first. Yeah, I didn't. I forgot it, about the tall bars. Yeah, those are your tall. Big, your big bars. Yeah. Organizing the security so, racks. We may have to just not sit that one on top. This one here. Yeah. Well, I could put it like that. Yeah. yeah, let's let's turn these like this. We may not be able to get them all on here in that angle. You may have to move some of them over there. Maybe turn them kind of sideways. That's what I've been doing. I've been cocking the little buggers. I've been cocking them. There. Well, we've got one. All right, now we won't have ha, to ha, worry ha. about it. Ha, ha, ha. And then we'll be tipping over and then eat it. There, there you go. Okay. So now we're going to make tarts. And we're going to video Ooh, that. You did steal my wash rag. You, I told you, give me a, give me a clean, fresh white cloth, yeah. wet, and hand it to me. Yeah. It was to use during the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I kidnapped it, didn't you? Could you could it back. <laughs> Is that the story? Yeah, that's what I'm sticking to. All right, so uh, how to clean these things, set them in the sink and fill up hot water over the top, and then just take you a, a scrub brush, soap is included. I've never needed soap to wash them, except for maybe with the activated charcoal. Oh, it stuffs the devil. It's, in, it's, in, it's insidious. It's insidious. That's it. It's insidious. It's insidious. And, uh, or you can put it in your sink. If your sink will not house it, you can't get it completely in the sink. Uh, set it in the sink sideways. And uh, just take your sprayer with hot, hot water and a scrub brush and they clean up perfectly. 
and then pat them dry with a towel. And I like to set them up, set them up and open them all the way up to air dry. And then I close them back up and put them on the shelf. All right, are you uh, I'm cleaning up the mess back here. Are you clean? She's cleaning up my mess. And uh, so we're gonna make tarts now. And there's been a problem with the wax industry. So a certain type of wax has just ceased to exist because the FDA soy wax, soy wax, eco soy wax. That's what it is. Yeah, eco soy wax. Yeah, the uh, FDA has uh, banned a certain type of soy product, and of course, that company that does all the engineered seeds and stuff, they have of course engineered something that will be, have less trans fats or something. Uh, so, the monosano, that's it. So they won't be harmed in any way by the proposal because they are probably backing the whole thing and uh, making it happen so that they can control the world's food source even more. soap recipes. It's all written down. All right. 